The Polaroid 100 Land Camera is a fun way to experience film photography in today's digital age as it provides a view into the recent past and gives a nifty experience capturing moments without the long wait of conventional film development. Let's see. So this type of camera, this is a Polaroid Land Camera and it is an instant film camera. So what that means is that when it develops the film as you take it. So when you take out a photo, you'll you'll end up with this within a minute or so. And so that's basically how it works. It is the predecessor of the uh, Polaroid cameras that we know and love. It is a little different though because it is a uh, it's a pull apart film camera. It doesn't just come out ready. You have to pull apart a negative from it. It's not like these ones from the past that we know and love. Um, that I'm sure a lot of you have grown up with. Um, but if you see some of these, um, I've seen some of these in some family um, albums of my uh, grandmothers. And yeah, they're, they're really cool. And so, so, so that's just the big difference right there. Um, it's the cool part about it, it's completely mechanical. Um, apart from, it has a small light sensor right here because it is an automatic camera. So it'll automatically expose your photo exactly how you need it. And so you do need a battery for that. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, it can only be purchased used. You can only buy it used. Um, it was built and manufactured from 1963 to 1966. So it is, um, you can only buy it used, but they are built like a tank. And this one I bought on eBay for under a dollar. And so that's, that's a good thing right there. Um, another thing that you will need is film. Here's a film cartridge from Fuji Film. It's FP100C. And that is something that will be definitely needed for this. Um, there's also, um, there is a battery in here. It's a 4.5 volt that they no longer manufacture, but you could actually buy a converter online. It takes three AAAs, but it does the same exact thing. That's for that light sensor I was talking about earlier. So what we want to do with this camera right here is we want to have, these are our three required parts, okay? We're going to have the converter, like I said, because that's necessary because you can't find that battery um, too much anymore. And then you need your camera, of course, and then you need your, your film. So with those three things, we're going to look at that. And basically, I'm just going to give a quick assessment of the camera. So here you'll have this protective case that goes over it and it protects it for any kind of damage and that's probably why this camera lasted so long. This is really heavy duty. Um, the type of camera it is as well as a rangefinder camera. This means that the viewfinder is really just this. Um, you'll see in SLRs or DSLRs you're seeing exactly through the lens. So this just gives you your best estimate of what's happening through the lens because what's coming through the lens is actually the light is hitting the exposure so it's making that photo that's coming out of it. And so with this, um, just a basic assessment, this is the rangefinder, and you'll, you'll look through that viewfinder and you'll see what's going to come through it. And so on the viewfinder, you'll see where you can actually frame it, and right here is where you focus. And so on this um, particular spot right here, you'll see two double images, and so basically it'll come through like this. And what you'll do is you'll see this tab right here that you pull back and forth. And that will help you adjust your focus. And when that happens, that double image comes to just one, that means that it's focused. So that those two are aligned, you're good to go. And so that's what these two are right here. And so when you're opening it, you want to pull that out to make sure that you can actually do that. And the good part about it is there is, there is a, a number right here, one, and so that's your first step, focus. And then two is your shutter. So you'll take that, that shutter, that shot right there. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is we are going to put in the battery. And then we're going to put in the film. And so with this one, I want to push down on this lever right here and pull it in. Fold in the rangefinder, And then put the battery in really quickly. So you want to be extra careful with this too because these are older wires so you could potentially break them if you're too rough with them which I may or may not have already done but fix. <laughs> so definitely be careful with that. And so I'm putting both of those in and then now 
I'm going to go ahead and I am going to look through. Let's see. We're going to put in the film in as well. And so the film comes from this little, on the latch on the bottom of it, you'll pull it and it'll pop right open. And so it'll pop up in the whole back. So I have this old cartridge right here. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to open and put in the new one of the FP100C. So I'm going to open the box. Make sure to follow these two little tabs right here. So that way you're not pushing on the film at all. So it doesn't mess up at all because there is little exposure packets in there. I'm going to take that out. Get all this trash out of the way. And then what you're going to do is you're going to want to have the white tab up. And so with this, you'll just slide it into place as so. And you'll make sure that all of these tabs right here are over this side of the camera. So they're over on that. And then I can close it in. And you'll hear it snap when it's ready. Just like that. So now you have this cover right here. You'll just need to pull that out and off. And with this little tab right here out, as you can see, the white tab for number one, that's your first exposure ready to go. And so you have your entire camera almost ready for the most part. One thing to keep in mind is when you're opening this, when you take open that viewfinder, you want to push this up as you're pulling the bellows out. And so the bellows are this accordion-like looking material here. And so that just allows for the camera to be able to be compact and then also to extend itself when it's um, taking in the exposure and functioning as a camera. All right. And now, another thing to keep in mind is that your speed is correct. This speed right here says 75. That is perfect for this 100 speed film. Um, it doesn't match because Polaroid, they made a different film before um, Fujifilm made it, um, but now, it's perfect for 100, your exposure is going to be great. And let's see. If you're going to the 3000, you actually will turn it to 3000. 3000 is the black and white edition of the film. It's a little more sensitive. You can use that for indoor, sh indoor shooting, um, whereas this color film is really good for outdoors because it's, uh, it's something that does require a lot of light. So you need to make sure of that. Another thing too, you'll see this light ring on the front. I've always had the best luck going to the lightest feature as possible. I'm sure that may depend on your camera, so you might want to check that out as you're doing it. Um, all right. So now, as far as shooting goes, so we went through number one, as you can see right here, and then your number two, but your number three, you want to make sure this, so this is the shutter release lever. So what you want to do is make sure that's winded. So you'll pull it down, and so that means that the shutter is ready to fire. So when I press this button, it's going to open, expose the photo, and everything should be good to go. And so I'm just going to take a sample photo here. So I'm looking through and make sure that this, the double exposure is lined up, and I'm going to frame the shot. And I'm just going to take it of, of those trees outside the window. It's not going to be the best shot, but it's going to really give you an example of how this works. So now what I'm going to do is pull out the film. So I'm going to go to this tab, pull it out. And what's going to happen when I pulled out that tab, I mean, it's not broken, but this little tab came out so I can actually pull out the exposure and it's going to release the element. So you see a little packet in here of, of um, developer that spreads over the entire film so that way it can develop correctly. And so now all you have to do is according to your temperature on your box, you're going to have to wait. And for this one it says, let's see, at this current temperature we're going to wait 90 seconds. And so just wait 90 seconds for it to develop and then um, we peel it apart and it's easy as done. And so with this, um, you want to let it dry. And a good a thing that is a common misconception with, with these older photos is they always say, shake it like a Polaroid picture, when in fact, that originated with this kind of photo. So if you shake it, this actually helps it because the development is happening right here, right now. It's not contained within the packet. And so that is just a, a, a cool little thing to keep in mind. So with this one, we just want to make sure to do that. And so we'll probably just 
wait for that to go. So, now you'll see that you can peel this apart. And so I'm going to peel it apart. And voila, we have our exposure right here. And so that's how you load film, load the battery, and take uh, and shoot photos with the Polaroid 100 land camera. Um, the good thing to remember, just like I said earlier, the Polaroid 100 land camera is a great way to take um, nifty photos with film without the waiting for the development. It's a great experience. And I'd suggest it to anyone out there who can just... Uh, who has an enthusiasm for photography and is uh, and doesn't mind uh, taking things back from a blast from the past. Thank you.